when people are is saying you need to delegate more to somebody else, it's like, oh, the work is too much, the work is too much. Oh, that guy is going to be in control. That guy is like the boss, and the rest must just do what he is saying. If that is the type of idea we have, that is not from God. That is not from God. That guy is the boss. He can just tune everybody and just tell them what to do. Okay, that is immature in the flesh if we don't understand what we are talking about when we talk about delegate. Delegate. Delegate is in the context of a relationship. It's in the context of a relationship. To dump something on someone is either I'm just in performance, but I don't understand relationship at all. Hello? Accountability. Accountability. You must report back about what you've done. Who's the one that you are accountable to for what you do, what you plan, your vision? No, I've heard this from God, and I don't want others now to mess it up on this. I must just follow Christ. If you follow Christ, you will be accountable. You won't believe it, but this hand is not just accountable to the head. Otherwise, the hand would have been there, and you know, then you would have had like a owner. Something may be there. But this hand that is accountable to the arm that is accountable here, hello. And then at the end to the head. So may God help you to get out of super spiritual rubbish in Jesus' name. Not one of us, but I'm going to tell some other guys. But uh, what are we saying? That we will learn how to be accountable to one another. We need one another. We need one another. The sermon, if you were not here two weeks ago, and uh, last week, please go and see it on our Father's Home channel, on uh, the YouTube. Very important. But what am I saying? When I'm mature, I will be accountable. So it's God through His Son. Accountability that we saw about absolutely, absolutely everything. The context of to delegate, to delegate, and to initiate, we see that concept in the triune God. We could say the leader, he's initiating certain things, and then he's delegating to a lot of people what to do. And you must just now follow, and he can do whatever he wants. There is no way such a thing. But the healthy concept about initiate and delegate we find in the trinity where god revealed himself as a family that's the other word for god as a triune god god revealed himself as a family that are all one that together they are called god but separately father son and holy spirit are you with me? But then we see John 3.16 that you all know. And with John 3.16, what are we talking about? There's one that initiates and then he delegates. He's delegating. He's a father. He initiates. He initiates because he cannot help himself. Because if he is who he is, that means he's driven by himself and that is love. For God so loved, the Father so loved the world. Father so loved the world that he dreamt about. Not the world that we hate, must hate. Not the world that we must turn our back on. Not the world and the rubbish we created. The dream world in his heart. He so loved, he was so passionate about his dream for me and you. That he gave, he delegated to Jesus the mission. Delegated to him the salvation plan how he would come to earth and fulfill the purpose. Uh, are you still here? We can call one another together when we come together and say, uh, delegates, delegates of the kingdom. Um, that will sound freaky. Maybe we must call the church that, but that will sound very freaky. But that's at the end of the day who you are. You are a delegate. You are delicate, but also a delegate. Um, hello, sent by the Father, through His Son. The delegate is Jesus Christ, and you are, have no mandate out of Him. Out of Him. But in Him, you're a delegate, delegate before God the Father. I'll just say hello. 
or at least something, you know. So in Father, the concept of initiative that we talked about two weeks ago, and the Father delegating to us, is found. It has nothing to do, first of all, with who's the boss and who's the slave. Who must serve and who not. We are all servants in Christ. We are all delegates and to, unto us is delegated by the Father the mandate to build the church of Christ as we are co-workers, co-workers with Christ. Are you with me? Ah, please, just tell me, are you with me? The delegated one lives in you. So if you want to follow Christ in your spirit, he's the delegated one, Jesus Christ, and you are in him. So get into the place of his mandate. Otherwise, you can delegate to yourself. I can delegate, but what, who's delegating? My opinion. He's the boss, and he's telling me what to do. He's giving me a mandate. That fear is giving you a mandate of how to fear, where to protect yourself, where not to protect yourself, where to feel uh, ashamed, where to feel insecure. He will tell you where you're supposed to do, whatever you need to do. Uh, anxiety, stress, intimidation, or even success. Success will delegate unto you. This is how you must do it. That is what you must do. This is how hard you're supposed to work. That is how things are supposed to happen. This, 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 this. And you are just saying, yes, yes, yes. Who's the one? Who's the master? And you are the manager. Let's say he is the master. I'm the manager. In certain roles, we are the servants, and there's other managers over us. And some other roles, you're supposed to be a manager, and people are supposed to follow you as servants. Not, first of all, to serve you. Servant leadership, but everybody serving one another. Why? Because whatever you do, you do as if unto the Lord. You call yourself not a servant. Okay, then what are you doing? Because you're supposed to do whatever you do as if unto the Lord, like a servant would serve. We are still here. So if there's a delegation, here's a delegation together, but there's another, I don't know, thousand delegations um, set aside for God and His purposes in this city and in this nation and in the world a lot, a lot, a lot. But may God help us to understand in what way we're supposed to make a difference. But the first thing you need to know is, God, how did you get the faith to believe that I will be accurate as a delegate? You, each one of you. That your church can be the delegation. You know, other word for a delegate is also an ambassador. We find that 2 Corinthians 5. Is that the next one? I don't know. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19. Where the word says, we are all ambassadors of Christ. That is a God in Christ. Oh, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Just verse 19 before it. That it, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us. The word of reconciliation. A lot of other translations that committing is entrusting to us. God trusts you with a message of reconciliation. You know, if you are an ambassador to the United Nations, it's the authority of a nation, authority of South Africa that decided we can trust that man to represent us accurately at the United Nations. So God decided that he can trust you and me to present his kingdom accurately out there in Bloemfontein, in the schools, at the varsity, and wherever God is sending you. So you start in that place. Not at the place of, I don't know if I'm good enough. Don't go and argue with God. 
And we think we are just sorting out our lives. Yes, we need to sort it out. We need to sort out our lives to believe what God believes about us. We need to sort out our lives that we will have the opinion about ourselves that's the same opinion that God has about me. Because I can, if I can sort this out, I will have the right opinion about other people. But if you're struggling with God's opinion about you, I'm not worthy and I'm not this and this is not, and this is just rubbish. Yeah, there's rubbish in your flesh. But who are you in Christ? When you can appreciate that, you will have respect for your life in Christ, then you will have respect for others. Otherwise, you will try to win the favor, and then you are oversensitive and get hurt and get hurt and get hurt and take offense and struggle with unforgiveness and struggle with opinions and struggle with all these other rubbish. Why? Because I'm not established in Christ. You find yourself oversensitive easily, being disappointed easily, closing your heart to people, uh, fearful to trust others. You are not established in Christ. You need to grow up. That means become mature. How? To find yourself through the word in Christ. Because in Christ you will find that heaven, that your father believes in you, believes in you. And he trusts you. Oh, no. You're not necessarily trustworthy. But he trusts you that tomorrow you will have a breakthrough. Otherwise now you will die. You're going to just make a mess up. Let him protect you. But he has the faith in you that this afternoon you will walk with him. He has the faith that right now you will hear his heart, you will hear his word, and you will allow it to change you, to set you free into that what he has for you. He has that faith in you. He has the faith that tonight you're going to speak to him, but you're not going to tune him everything that he must do for you, your agenda, and that's all. He has the faith that tonight you will enjoy your time with him. You will share your heart with him, but you will give him time to speak to you. You will hear his heart. Are you still here? Oh, please, my brother, my sister, represent him well. Represent him in an accurate way. At the United Nations, that man cannot open his mouth. You know, there you find a man, he must present Ukraine. You find a man, he must present the Palestinians. There's a man that he must present the, is, the Israel. I mean, you say just the Israelites. Must represent Israel. And those guys, they cannot say what they want, even if they have a different opinion. If they have a struggle, they must stand down and say, whoa. But that guy representing Israel, even though if he feels, but this was wrong and that was wrong, he will have to say just as they say, as the leadership say, they're supposed to speak. They cannot give their own opinion and they, otherwise they are fired. Unfortunately, ish, there's a lot of us that need to be fired <laughs> as representatives, as ambassadors in how we represent the kingdom out there. And because of that, there are millions, 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 maybe billions in the world not serving Christ because of how we represented him out there. May God forgive us. And may God cleanse his church. May God bring his church into a new place. But it starts with you, man. But you need to establish yourself in Christ and you need to know that your father believes in you, that you will walk accurately tomorrow. Tomorrow at your job, tomorrow at the school, tomorrow where you study with that other guy. He will see. This is not a fake. Because in front of the people, he's like this. Behind the back, he's like that. On the phone, he will communicate like this. But in front of everybody, oh, my brother. And you present what? You're just a fake. That's what your friend, he will not, your friend will not say to you, but your friend, knows, I cannot trust that man. I cannot trust that woman. Because that woman can change like this. May God help us to grow in character, to grow that we represent him well towards one another. But also in your heart, you know, if you are representing him well. Amen. Don't go and sit in condemnation now. No. Ask God for forgiveness and then respect the blood 
That through the blood, tomorrow is a new opportunity. Not a new opportunity to prove to yourself. Not a new opportunity so that you can forgive yourself. Not a new opportunity to show God, God, I can do this right. No, a new opportunity because of the blood of Christ. And that's it. Are you still here? Praise the Lord. So where are we now? We don't know yet. We find Jesus Christ delegated by the Father. Jesus came in John 1 verse 18. Somewhere there's a John 1 verse 18. Nobody has seen the Father, but the one that came from the bosom of the Father, the only begotten Son. He has declared him. He has declared him. Jesus didn't just speak of from his, himself. No, no. The word says, only what he heard from the Father, he said. What, only what he saw the Father is doing, that he will do. That's it. That's it. And prayer, many times prayer is to get into that place to make sure that you represent him accurately. That ambassador in the country cannot just do, and th I, think what, uh, I think what Ethiopia, uh, what the government is saying, I think what they think about this stuff could be the following. And you have your interpretation as an ambassador of what Kenya is standing for. What a clown. He better be in contact with him the whole time. He better study the laws. He better study the principles, what Kenya is standing for. But how can we be representatives of Christ if we never, never study the word? You get out to the word. You start to get into understanding what is the principles. What is the principles God is standing for? Uh, hello? So that it's not just open your mouth when you think Holy Spirit is saying, but you know what God is saying about that topic, about that theme, about that situation. Because more and more your heart becomes his heart, because you know his word, you know that principles. Hello? The judge out there is to know, supposed to know the principles, what the country is standing for. He's representing the authority from government. Are you still here? But you say, oh, well, I don't know that. My brother, my sister, you will represent someone, if you like it or not. If you don't choose to get into the word, you will represent the principles and the words of fear or flesh or that lust or that rubbish or that compromise or that lying thing. But you will represent somebody. So if there's a, this passionate commitment to represent Christ accurately, great. But if it's this amount of passion in representing Christ, this is not nothing. This other 50% will be a passionate representing of yourself, your flesh, your selfishness, your fears, your whatever. Representing your circumstances. And God must the whole time come and change the circumstances so that you can have a life. Instead of finding a life in Christ. And that, let Christ walk through and over that circumstance. He not necessarily, like they always say, He's not going to take the fire away, but going to walk with you through the fire. Not the wilderness, not the storm, but He's going to go through it with you. So that he can brag about who he is. He will send the storm. You can pray against the storm. You're wasting your time. If that storm is sent by God like the storm of the end time. The storm of when the nations. You don't know, say be careful the devil is going to shake the nations. I'm very sorry. God said I will shake the nations. God himself will shake the nations. But God, not that day, please have mercy on me. Shake my flesh now so that all the rubbish can get out. So that I will build accurately. So that they, when the storms are coming more and more, my house will stand because I wasn't a fool in a time when it was not necessary. The wise man, the wise virgin, Get the oil in the time when it is not necessary. When it is not necessary so much to call on his name. Not necessary to pray so much. Not necessary to get out to the word so much. 
that will reveal if you're a fool or a wise virgin. Because in that time, you just get out to him to commune with him. Om net met die Heere te gesels, a bykie. Those in Afrikaans say, om net a bykie te gesels. You English, one or two, just try it maybe. Om net a bykie te gesels. Some of you guys. Now, I will not, now you can look at me and say, okay, you try it in Sutu. <laughs> Sorry. I cannot even try it. Just, what is gesels in English? Commune is too official. Oh, that is too flattish. Um, to have a conversation, to have a nice fellowship. Yeah. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? The thing of Kair. Go and Kair with the Lord through the word. Go and have a wonderful time. Like you would have a wonderful time with friends in a relaxed way. Not going to the head office, what is right, what is wrong, what, what is my confession, what is, what, what is the mandate that I must hear. You better do that with Christ as king. But Christ as friend, Christ as the bridegroom, you as the bride. Christ as your life, Christ as the, as the passion in you, the one that you love. Go and sit and speak to you. Go and enjoy the word. I plead with you. You're still here? Okay. But where are we now? Okay. Delegates. Delegates. Called out. Called out. You're a delegate by faith. Now 1 Peter 2 verse 9, hey? says, we are a chosen people. Living stones. Called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now the word church means ecclesia, means the called out ones. You are called out for a purpose. Remember, called out for a purpose. You're a living stone with the Holy Spirit in you because God has a purpose. The destiny is not to be just a living stone with the Holy Spirit in you. That's not your destiny. Holy Spirit is in you for a mandate, for a mandate that you will be part of the church, that you will understand how to be church. How to be the called out ones with mandate so that the church can become the home of the Father. The home where God says, if you follow me, if you love me, you will obey my teaching. I will come and we will make our home with you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. It's for a purpose. Understand your purpose and understand his purpose in your life. Delegates, called out ones. That is the church. But you know, in all of this, as delegates, when Father is delegating to Jesus, then also when Jesus is going back, he says, there's a one that's delegated unto you. He will come. He will come with his mission. That's the Holy Spirit. He will not speak from himself. He will just remind you of my words and explain to you my words that's the one behind the scenes my brother my sister when things are happening in your life when god is doing the thing when he's sending by grace his fire to get out all the rubbish and by through like the rain to bring freshness and allow you to blossom hello and the wind so that what you have will go forth will go forth that's all the holy spirit but that's the one, one working behind the scenes. Because we will never, never put the focus on himself. And we can be very disrespectful towards the ones behind the scenes. Because I could see myself in the scene. I could see my circumstances in the scene. I can see all oh, how cool I am, how good I am, how oh, this, how I can win this, how I can win that. Oh man, let's not be fools, man. Don't let the devil laugh at you, man. Because you're so cool, you can do this, you can do... Oh, you can go with the image, man. The devil is sitting back to say, that guy does not know who he is. Because he doesn't know the image of Christ. And how he was made in the image of Christ. <laughs> now he's running to find the image. Only the demons will tell one another, oh, that guy is stupid, man. Because he doesn't know how clever he's actually in Christ. 
That's not us, other people, but we pray for them. Okay, God's going to help us. Hij zal nog hier. But the one working behind the scenes in your life is the Holy Spirit. Respect him. Respect him. You can grieve him. You can ignore him. But, the, but the, not the worst, the, the awesomeness is he will never leave you. He will never forsake you until you see Jesus face to face, face to face. But his mandate is that tomorrow you will see more of Jesus, more of Jesus and less of yourself. More of Jesus through the, 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 the water of the Spirit to let you blossom. More of Jesus, less of yourself that through the fire the rubbish is burned away. Como say, more of him, less of me. Let that be so in Jesus' name. Let that be so in Jesus' name. I want to say, oh, I'm going back to that John 1 verse 18. Here Jesus is as a representative, a delegate. He's representing the Father. I come from the Father. I know the Father. I know the authority. So if I present myself like an ambassador, ambassador as the good shepherd, what did we say? He's actually saying, the Father will never leave you, never forsake you. Just like the shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep, but he will not disappear, the shepherd. So when Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd, he's saying the Father will always be there for you. A Father that is always present. That's an awesome Father. Secondly, he says, I'm the bread of life. He came from the bosom of the Father. He's just representing Christ. He's not representing himself. And Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. What is he saying? You have a father that will always, always provide for you. He will always provide for you. You must just know in what. You can pray for the ice cream, but maybe it's not the father's will for you to have that ice cream now. So we can pray for certain things in our lives, but we need to know how and for what we need to pray. Are you with me? So he's a representative. You're a representative. You're a delegate Okay. Then he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. What is he saying? Father will always have a breakthrough. Always have a breakthrough. You will always have a plan. I'm the way. You will always have a breakthrough. There's breakthroughs living in you because the breakthrough in you is called Jesus Christ. I have competition, but I will, I, God will help us. The way, the truth. There will always be an opportunity for freedom. Truth will set you free. I'm the way, the truth. Father will always bring freedom into your life because through his son saying to you, I'm the truth. I'm the truth. Truth will set you free. Truth, you build the foundation. You will always with the father. You will always have opportunity for foundations and breakthroughs. Foundations and breakthroughs and freedom. Let's say foundations. foundations. Breakthroughs. Breakthrough. Freedom. Why? Because he's called the way, the truth, and the life. Then you see your father's heart. He's representing the father perfectly, perfectly, accurately. He says, I'm the resurrection and the life. What is he saying? You have a strength in you beyond death. Death cannot hold you. Nothing, nothing can hold you. There's a strength from heaven in you. There's a capacity in you from heaven. Why? Because the resurrection and the life is in you. And he destroyed all the authority from hell. You cannot be destroyed because the Father's ability, the Father's strength is in you through His Son. Amen. Number five, you are, I'm the true vine. What is, what is He saying? If you stay dependent on the Father, if you stay dependent, there will always be fruit. There will always be fruit. You will always have quality. Everybody say quality. You can always bring forth quality. But the chamors is if you start to find your identity in the quality and you become dependent on your money, dependent on your success, dependent on your business, dependent on all those things that you can do so nice, so greatly, all those gifts that can work through you. Yes, the gift can work through you and you can bring healing and you can be accurate through the prophetic, but that doesn't mean you are dependent on God. The gifts can still work. Hello? But you can make an absolute mess of your life by not being dependent on him. What is he saying? I'm the true vine. He's saying, Father wants you to be dependent on him. Ask him in my name. 
Call him our Father who are in heaven. Not my will, your but will be done. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Number six of the seven. Jesus says, I'm the door of the sheep. He says, I'm the door of the sheep. Right. Thank you, Lord. Door of the sheep. Sheep go out. Sheep go, come in. Right. No. What is he saying? You want to know something about the Father? Jesus says, I'm representing him. I'm a delegate. I'm an ambassador of who he really is. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. When I call myself the door of the sheep, you can know through me opportunity every day. Every day, every day, every day. You will have opportunities in my name. If you can just see where I am as a door. Oh, you pray that God will open the opportunity there at that place for that work. God, if, if I receive that work, I know it's from you. Whoa, that's what a cop out. You better hear his voice because you must see if he's standing in the door. The devil can open up 365,000 doors uh, per year, more. He, oh, he can open up a lot of doors. You being lazy, not work, walking with God, not walking with the door of the sheep, just say that he must open up the doors and if you see an open door, you're going to go. You know the guy that stole all the chickens? Not a Griari guy, I hope, I believe. I wondered if we must sometimes check the guys coming to church. You know when they go back, they check, open the boot, <laughs> just make sure there's no chicken in there. Ruan, pass off for you. I will not say names. All right, what am I saying? Oh man, what did I what did I ook nog say? You know my hand off getrek. Opportunity, man. Thank you. Who said that? Chocolate for you there at the, afterwards. Right. Good. Opportunity. What am I saying? You need to hear from God. What opportunity? So this this little little lighty, he stole the chickens, man. He stole the chickens. And then he gave his life to Christ. And then he stole more chickens. So the pastor asked him, no, man, no, man. What's your problem? He said, no, I'm trusting the Lord. I'm now asking the Lord, where is the chicken? Now we can have that type of attitude in what we want, you know. But we are, oh, come on, man. And then we pray in this ridiculous way. But we need to know what God is saying. What is his opportunity? What is his opportunity? Bad example is that prostitute can, can pray and say, if I get that space uh, to do my work, I know it's from God. And that door can open. She can pray that and that door can open. Who may open the door? The Lord? Ha! Huh. So get out of that mentality. God, your Father, has opportunities prepared for you tomorrow and he's excited about your opportunities for today for tomorrow next week next year he's excited about it opportunities you must just come to know jesus as the door of the sheep that you will follow him and you follow him and, and somewhere where he stops it sounds freaky but that's the place where you must go through him as the opportunity amen but if Christ is not the center of the opportunity, you don't go into that thing. You have an opportunity. You won't believe how many people from what's uh, it? Lotto said, "No, but we can get for the farm for the development of this, development of that. We can lotto for very pur nice purposes." Oh, we had opportunity to get millions already. You know. But that's not Christ as the door of the sheep standing in that place as the opportunity. You are still here. Okay, so quickly, uh, just uh, three, four examples. First of all, there's a crisis with all the old aunties. When you have crisis, then what are you going to do? I need to delegate someone, someone. I need to get a few guys to deal with the crisis. So it's a New Testament church. Everybody is not psyched up. What's the right word? Excited and they are going for God and it's just awesome. And they said, but no, there's a few aunties from this other, other group and we need more people to care for them. Ugh, yet that doch. Okay, let's just quickly settle that. Get a few, get a few other aunties. 
that um, can just help there quickly and um, sort it out. No, 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 no. To care for the aunties. Who, where's the scripture in Acts six? Now that's my brother there that is writing down. They're going to give us Acts six. <laughs> Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit, and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. That was the apostles, the pastors. They can just, just have to sit there and read the Bible, you know, and minister to a few people. No, no, Robbie's. <laughs> That's not all that it entails. You need to know the unique calling that God has for you. But you know, why? Why will we waste these young men full of the spirit and character and passion? And You know, they must, they must have a breakthrough there. Now you must just watch if your Oma Hruiki, if she has enough there, she has enough there, she has... That doesn't sound logic. Whatever you do, do it as if unto the Lord. And if you are established in Christ, established with the fullness of the Holy Spirit, you will do what God has called you to do. And then they were not unfaithful with the aunties. But still, because of what is in you, because of what is in you, you represent Christ and you cannot but represent him. So when Philip and Mr. Stephen, two other guys that just had to watch the aunties, when they stood up with what was in them, what happened? Stephen became the first martyr in the New Testament. But you know, even when the, when the stones rained on him, rained on him, it wasn't like he was trying to justify. He represented Christ well. He saw even the open heavens and he prayed for a man, uh, prayed for a man that was finally responsible for his stoning. He prayed for that man, and he didn't know that this man is going to write two-thirds of the New Testament for the next millenniums in all the nations of the earth. But remember who this, this guy, the church gave him this awesome job. It was delegated to you just to clean the toilet or just to take out all the weeds, like we said many times. How many weeds did you take out on the farm already? We forgive you in the name. What am I saying? They're just supposed to watch after the old tunnies. Oh, that, and they took offense because he didn't recognize my potential. He didn't recognize what is in me. He didn't recognize and, and have respect for my calling. He didn't, oh, you can throw your tantrum. Okay. But these guys, they were only acknowledged with everything they have as good enough to watch the aunties. That because of what was in them, they stood with stature and didn't become unfaithful with the aunties. But that man stood up and he spoke under the guidance of the Spirit. And he was a key, he was a key to pray for a soul two chapters further to become the Paul. And then the other guy that also had to watch the aunties, oh man, he was also preaching in this revival and people giving their lives to Christ, demons go, sickness uh, must go. People healed, and then God said to him, go on a lonely road, and he's not in the image of the success of his business, in the success of his ministry, in the success, the success of his ministry doesn't speak louder, because he knows how to be a servant, he knows how to be a delegate of a most high, he knows how to be an ambassador of Christ, not an ambassador of his success, not an ambassador of his ministry. And as an ambassador of Christ, he walked on this lonely road. He saw what is laying ahead. No. There's a purpose. No. There's an open, lonely road with nobody on it. And God says, There, that's where you go. And this man knew, full of the Spirit, how to go on that lonely road so that he can find a, the word says, a very important official from Ethiopia. So that God wanted right now for the gospel to go to Africa. Right there in the beginning of the book of Acts. I said, stop all that. We're going to take, make sure that the gospel go to Africa. But he didn't explain that to Philip, man. He didn't explain that. So God can use you. God can use you if you are really willing. Really willing. To go in so many directions. To have an impact in so many places. 
into the nations. How do you represent God for the Palestinians, for the Israelis, for Ukraine, for all these guys, for millions starving in Africa, for a lot of horrific, horrific, horrific things happening out there? Hello? Good day. Are you still with me? How do you represent him? No, I, 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 it's not that I can go there. Yes, it's your prayer that can go there. It's your faith. It's the way that you declare. How many scriptures do you have that you declare over the Middle East? No, I don't have time for that. Okay. God says, there's no time for you to pray for the Middle East. There's no time to get a word from me. There's no time to stand on my word. That's what he told you. Amen? You're not a representative. I'm, I'm not going on a guilt trip. I'm going on a wake-up call. Guys, for in the times that we are living, what you sow, you will reap. This, and the other day, what if something like that happens to us? What if there's this missiles and this thing, and there's this, just this destruction and prophecies about bloodbath and this and that and that? No, I don't believe it was first from God. No. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, what is the type of seed that you put in the ground? For your future. For when your grandchild and your grandchild's grandchild, if Jesus didn't come yet, and there's a hell of a war where they can be destroyed, where they can be cut in pieces, where they can this and that and that, and whatever horrific things could happen. But you know, there was a granny, there was a grandfather, there was a grandfather's father who put some seed in the ground to be unselfish and pray for nations where all that horrific things are happening. And there's a harvest coming up three generations later in a supernatural protection for the kids. Because you were not so selfish as to think of yourself. But you had, wasn't a fool, but you were, had the wisdom to put the right seed in the ground. And God is not a God to be mocked. What you sow, you will reap in the flesh, but also in the spirit. Have respect for him. And what you sow, you will find that quality, awesome harvest. Either for your grandchild, either for, you don't know who. But put it out there. Get some word from God for the Middle East. Start to pray in tongues, even if it's just praying in tongues, and say, God, use my prayer wherever you want to use it. You know, if it's drought in the, like it was in the Northern Cape, or a lot of places, and, and suddenly there's just this cloud and that, on that two farms, psh, all that water. Oh, how, where did that come from? You, you had sometimes a thing of this blue sky and there's rain. Okay, it was a cloud day and the rain came like this. You know, you've seen that. What am I saying? And it's just you, God using your prayer, your praying in tongues. As that cloud over that puff out the door be. And suddenly it's raining there. They, oh, they don't understand. Where did this cloud come from? It come, came from some Wara Wara guy there in Bloemfontein that decided, I'm going to try this. I'm not going to experience anything. I'm just going to try it. And I'm going to pray in tongues. And God used him as a man of God. Because he was willing to be unselfish. And to think about more. And seek the kingdom. You don't have to be called an intercessor or an old auntie to pray effectively. Are you still here? Please, man. You know, one example, I know you have nothing to do till tonight. You are fasting this afternoon. You got that word this morning, eh? <laughs> Quiet. I've uh, talked about this 29 times. Just make as if you had never heard it before. So while we were praying as Creare and uh, the leaders and the students, some lekker groot knolle and... Uh, we were just praying like a normal prayer, you know, and some of them had the same facial expression as two of you, you know, that Tupperware. You know that. And you have a religious one, and then it's like this. How do they say it to the students, you know? And then you walk to this side, and you see the guy still going there. Then you know he's fast asleep, you know, even with the eyes open. It's a miracle in church. I don't know how it works. But in any case, 
Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I want to say. And we were just praying, you know, like getting in the morning. Okay, we're going to come together. Okay, let's pray in tongues a little bit. And we pray in tongues. And then we had this whole thing of blood speaks and the Armenian story that we wanted to, to say. This was 1996. We want to do something with it, with that story that we heard in Israel. And we're going to do something with it. At the end of the day, God's going to use this. So we pray. About this blast speaks, blast speaks. You remember uh, then what happened? Some of you guys, no, I'm not talking about the leaders. Don't make it, you know. You know. What happened? We were praying in tongues and suddenly, but we were a group praying in tongues. Suddenly I just got the name, just got the name Mel Gibson. And you know what we did? Wow, yes, I have confirmation. No, we laughed. We laughed. Mel Gibson, Pastor. You know, brave heart, patriot, all those stuff, you know, come on. That was it. But we prayed further. You know, when you hear something, it sounds ridiculous. Pray in tongues further. You don't know what God's going to do. But it was ridiculous. We laughed. But we kept on praying. Okay, how must, how must he... Mel Gibson do, he must make the movie, uh, Blood Speaks. Blood Speaks, he must make the movie. And we pray that we will find uh, a way to get to him. We even sent faxes to his company, whatever, whatever. And then one day, as we were praying, I said, whoa, guys, he mustn't do Blood Speaks. He must represent Christ in his blood like nobody else did ever before with a high age restriction. And that was exactly my words. Only a year later, we heard about it. Not because we prayed. But my brother and my sister, you can pray in a normal way without this annoying thing, without this sensing, without this thing. Just a normal, normal praying in tongues. And, and God used it at that moment where something needs to be pushed in the spirit in America, where they are busy finding the right people to Hello? To make this movie. And God decided, these guys are willing to pray. These guys are willing to pray, even in tongues. And they don't have to experience a thing. They don't have to experience a thing. They must just open up their mouths and faithfully pray. And God used it. As we had to lock in with a lot of other guys somewhere. That God decided, these guys are called up also for the army. A few guys here in Bloemfontein. And only a year later we heard about it. Oh, then we were excited. Then we were excited. I'm saying, you pray in tongues, you don't know where that prayer is going. You don't know where that prayer is going. Be a delicate in the spirit. Be a delicate. I'm signed by God. So in the spirit, is at, if you're standing against demonic strongholds in, in the area of the rubbish happening in schools. Praise God for that guy in Posse who stood up. Hey, amen. That was great. But may God help us even at the varsity here and in the schools, that we have the guts to stand up in Christ. Are you here? But you're praying in tongues, but you don't know that you are praying for 30 key people in 20 schools in Bloemfontein. That that key people will rise up, get over their fear, get over their image, and stand up for Christ. But you don't know that you are praying for that. You are praying in tongues, but you are a representative in the spirit of education in the schools of the youth. You are standing with that stature before Christ for the youth in the schools, but you didn't even know it. You didn't even experience anything. But at the right moment, the right time, you just need to pray. I told you that story of that one one time in Pretoria when I worked there, and I just, uh, like, it was past 8 o'clock, I just fell to pray in tongues. And I started to pray in tongues, like, for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and it was it. God didn't say anything. I didn't experience anything. I didn't feel a release. I didn't feel a break. I, there was nothing. It was just praying in tongues for 20 minutes, as if you were walking somewhere and you accomplished absolutely nothing. The next day, the guy that I always had the lift with, uh, that atheist, German guy, he said to me in the day, I've had a major lot of accidents in my life with, with motorbikes and 
and cars and a lot of things. Last night I was on the a gravel road and there was a sand bank, a sand bank is a what? Whatever. A lot of gravel on the side. And I was going at a speed and the next moment I caught the, the bank on the side. And most probably he had to go like this. He said, and then I just called on your God. And he laughed. Because he said, we're talking all about your God and your, your angels that must pay more petrol for the bike. <laughs> Always mocking. And he said, and I prayed to your God, and the next moment the car was just, just stopped. It was just, it just stopped. And when I looked at the time, I realized, I asked him, when did it happen? It was a time when I didn't experience something. I just got a normal thought like, go and drink a Coke, you know? No, that's not normal. Okay, it was like, I just got a normal thought. Praying tongues. I prayed in tongues. I didn't experience it was God. I just prayed in tongues. Exactly on the time when God gave this atheist German a major, major miracle. You don't know, delegate, for what you are called for any time of the day. That ambassador cannot say, only between 8 and 5, um, the president can phone me from Kenya. Even though I'm an ambassador, I will not answer him. Finish. Ha. How available are you? I'm not saying 24-7 available to hear his voice, to hear his mandate, to hear whatever he wants to say to you. Are you with me? Are you with me? Please, please. Okay. We must go for a landing. There's a lot of scriptures that I, uh, that I wanted to speak about. First service also, but we don't. We'll not get out to that. Matthew 28, all I'm saying is, at the end of the day, Jesus came and said, all authority, all authority in heaven and on earth belongs to me. Therefore, everybody say therefore. If you understand his authority, you will do. Therefore, go, make disciples, baptize them, teach them to obey. Teach them to obey. Obedience, obedience, obedience is the response of a delegate to the master. Obedience is the response of the delegate to the master if you respect the master. You are respecting a master today. Maybe you have seven masters and you are obeying whatever that master of selfishness, of flesh, of, of whatever, of opinions, of fear, of anxiety, what those masters are saying. But get into the place that Christ will be more and more and more the only one. You are still here? I know, I know. So what I'm just saying with that, man, obey the master. Can I, can I say that like that? And uh, all authority given to me in heaven and on earth, if you respect my, my authority, that's why I say to you, go, make disciples. In the beginning, Father, Son, Holy Spirit spoke to one another. They were a team as a family. And said, let us make man. And then in the New Testament, let's send them as representatives. And what do we tell these representatives? They must go and make man. Bring man in that pattern of life. You make disciples. You go and do that. And so that the disciples know a lot. No. So that they know how to obey God. So that they know how to obey the master who sent them as delegates into his place. Wherever they are called to be. Right. I rest my case. Are you still here? Martha Mary. We're going for a landing. Martha Mary. You know, when you are busy with what you think you're supposed to be busy, you can be miserable, man. You can be miserable, especially if you're not in God's will. You're doing the right thing at the wrong time. So Martha in the kitchen, Martha in the kitchen. And then what is her problem? Her problem is not first with Mary. Her problem is with God. He doesn't say, Lord, look how selfish is Mary. No, her complaint is with God. I mean, Mary, she's very close to Jesus. Come on. And she says, Lord, do you not care that she's not helping me? 
Anybody had a moan and a groan when you really worked hard and you had to do some other people's work and they're not doing the job and you are tired, you are frack gewerk, you are finished and at that moment is you are so irritated with these other guys, they go, still go and, they, and even some of them are very spiritual, very, very spiritual. But you must go and do all the work. They are spiritual. They're sitting there. Mary is sitting there at the feet of Jesus and I need to get practical and I will have to make all the food. Nobody has been there, but just imagine yourself. But what am I saying? In that place, in that place, you're a representative of Christ. And at that moment, you must know, is it the time to be at his feet? Or is it the time to be in the kitchen? Because when it's the time to be in the kitchen, he will be there with you in the kitchen. And like that lady who wrote the song, like I said a hundred times, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice, was the lady morning, afternoon, evening, making food in the kitchen, washing dishes. That was the lady in the kitchen. And that song on the lips of the church in the nations. Because he represented him so well in worship, he had to take that song and put it on the lips of the church in the nations. You go and represent God well in your life. You won't believe what he will do. In so many ways, what you only will hear in heaven, what he has done. What he has done through you. Are, are, are you with me? So again, the guy's in the storm. The guy's in the storm. What is God doing? Nothing. You feel God is doing nothing. There's a storm. You're going to die. And Jesus is doing what? He's sleeping in the boat. He's sleeping in the boat. And what do they tell him? Jesus, please, with all respect, can you wake up? No. No. Let's judge him, rather. We are in a crisis. You won't believe when you're in a crisis what flesh can rise up in you. Yay, puppy. <laughs> okay. So, we're in a crisis. Jesus... Do you not care? Do you not care that we're going to die? Even looking at Jesus and telling him we're going to die. Even with Jesus in the boat. <laughs> you can be so in the storm. You can be so busy with your stuff that you don't even realize whom are you addressing with no respect right in front of you. Right in front of you with no respect. He's with you in the boat. He's with you there in your circumstance. With what type of respect are you speaking to him? And even by God's grace, he still finished the storm. He still dealt with the storm. Even though they were not accurate in how they addressed him. But thank God. But God has called them as delegates to deal with the storm. He addressed them, hey. No, sorry. He didn't say hey. <laughs> You little of faith. You little of faith. He addressed their unbelief. Oh man, you're going through a storm. And Lord, have a heart, please. It's not time for discipline. It's just time to help us. Why first addressing us? Where's your faith? You know? Why? Because you are a representative. You are a delegate. And he has enabled you with the authority from heaven. So that in the name of Christ, you will speak to the storm. Just in the, like in the other instance when he wanted to pass them. But they were in the storm. And he had the faith. He had the faith in them that they will address the storm in his name. But praise God for his grace. When they struggled with the storm, he didn't intend to get in the boat. He wanted to pass. Go read your Bible. But then by his grace, he got in the boat and he dealt with the storm. He will, will by his grace, be there for you. But... Delegate, he has the faith in you that you understand how to get into the word, that your house will stand on the word, and that in his name hell must go. Hell must submit to the purpose of, of God that is in your spirit from heaven. In heaven, from heaven. Here, you walk with a mandate, ambassador, and in that embassy, the other country cannot touch you. In that embassy, you have authority. You run into his name and you are safe. Are you with me, ambassador of Christ? And you will see the breakthrough upon breakthrough that God has for you. I'm really finishing off with Galatians 6 to uh, carry one another's burdens and so fulfill the law 
of God. Carry one another's burdens. What are we talking about? Delegate, you are called to carry one another's burdens. That means when the one is suffering and he's feeling not lacquer, you must help him to feel lacquer. No. If the one doesn't have food, you need to give him food. Yes, that's a princi one principle. But carry one another's burdens is also to tune one another in love. You have a burden of anxiety, then th you better go and sit with him and pray and speak the truth over his life and help him to repent of that things that you need to repent of, if that is the root of that anxiety. That guy that is compromising, you must go and speak to him. That guy you, that you know, there's a lot of fake. Don't judge him. Don't judge him. You will be judged and you'll become 20 times worse with your judgment. No. But go and pray with him. Go and pray with him for the breakthrough in his life. You don't keep quiet. But carry one another's burdens. Last point. Carry one another's burdens. It's also a command to open up your burden. I have a burden where I'm struggling in this, or I'm struggling in that. I'm struggling with fear. I'm struggling with lust. I'm struggling with comparison. I'm struggling with, with self-condemnation or, or inferiority. I'm struggling with this. Open up the burden is the command of God. Because around you there's representatives of Christ that will help you. As tomorrow, you will be a representative of Christ to somebody next to you. God help us. We need your help, Lord, to represent you accurately. God, we are amazed that you have faith in us. You have such a faith in us that you believe we will represent you accurately. Forgive your church for not representing you accurately in among the Palestinians, among Israel, in the Middle East, so many places, so many places where we focused on ourselves as churches. Forgive us for that. But raise up your army, Lord. Raise up your delegates. Help them. Help us to respect you as the master calling us as managers. Help us to manage your business accurately with faithfulness. Forgive us for focusing on ourselves. Forgive us for that selfishness, Lord. Teach us even tonight, tomorrow, through prayer, even praying in tongues. Use us. Use us in your name, Lord. We thank you for that, Father. Father, and I pray that you will arrest every man, woman in this place for your purposes. That they will rise with stature as delegates from Christ. I thank you that you come and you do that, Lord. In Jesus' name and that name alone. And all say Amen, amen, let it be so.